We're here tonight to talk about AI and IP law. So we have all these new technologies that are moving really, really quickly. They're giving us incredible new capabilities, but there are lots of tensions between these technologies and established law on IP. So welcome everyone. Thank you all so much for coming um, to today's session on generative AI and IP, securing protection and navigating the risks. So my name's Harry. I'll be chairing today's panel alongside my lovely speakers, Nina, Peter and Anne. So next we're going to come on as well and have a look at some of the practical tips and things that you really need to be thinking about. So first is whether an AI generated work is actually protected by intellectual property rights, for instance, copyright. Another is actually looking at the data it's been trained on, the materials, all the data that's been fed into the AI tool, and whether that's infringing intellectual property rights. And then finally, you also really need to look at whether the AI generated image, the output, is infringing third party intellectual property rights. Uh, it relies on a lot of data, billions of pieces of data. How is that data collected? Is it licensed or is it scraped from the web? Where is it collected from? Is it the internet generally or is it from a particular repository? So I think there's two characteristics which have really driven a lot of interest that we've seen in Jones of AI, and that's simply the pace and the scale of the technical developments. Within the last year or so, a lot of these services are really leading into sort of customization and productization. So users can sort of tailor their experiences and tailor these models to apply to specific use cases. And obviously, if you're a business, that creates some really interesting questions as to what it could mean for your current business practices and where they're going forward. Put an image into stable diffusion and ask it to create a synthetic image of that image what you get back is likely to be a substantial reproduction of the image you just put into it and therefore be an infringement. Fine if you, the image was your own and you own a copyright in it, but not if you take taken someone else's copyright work and ask for that image to be created. Pete as well touched a little bit on this earlier. Um, we're looking at AI-assisted works and AI-generated works. And I think it's really important that we actually make this distinction. You've got to give identification of the creator. There's lots and lots of different conditions that you have to follow and comply with. So first off, we really understand the technology. And in order to do a proper analysis, you have to understand the difference between various types of generative algorithmic models. So for instance, the difference between a diffusion model and an autoregressive model, or even a generative adversarial network. We're really well placed to talk about these things because not only do we have a fantastic IP team at Mishcon, but we also have a fantastic data science team. So there's this great confluence and understanding between technology, the law, and this growing intersection between the two. AI-generated works pose intriguing questions about ownership, accountability, and the evolving landscape of intellectual property rights in a technology-driven era. We're really excited to see what happens next.